everybody, and welcome back to the number one best trader competition sponsored by Cobra Trading. And this is the uh, fall trading competition, uh, well, winter, fall, uh, winter, spring competition, week three review. And um, let's jump right in. My name is Michael Gujar. I'm the director of educational services here at Dash Trade. I'm joined by David Capablanca, um, who was our spring 2022 winner and uh, host of the Friendly Bear podcast. David, how are you? I'm doing great, Mike. It's good to see you and be here again. How are you doing? I heard, I heard you're taking a trip. You're jumping on a plane right after this, heading up to see the humble trader. Yeah, man, yeah. In, in about a few hours, I'll be over there. That's awesome. That's fantastic. I know we uh, worked with her very, very early on in her, uh, her career as a podcaster. But anyway... Great to have you here with us going through the results of this is the week three of the competition runs from March 18th to March 22nd, uh, which is today. How was your trading this week, by the way? Trading was, was good. Um, it's It's been a slower cycle for what I trade the past few weeks, which is fine. You know, it's just being more selective and more precise and uh, and and finding other things to do with your day and be productive. So you're not just staring at the screens and like try, trying to force a trade, you know. Yeah, overtrading could be a real killer if uh, yeah, if you don't exactly. see anything going on. And it's, you know, obviously we have a lot of things going on in the news. Uh, let's jump right into our top trader results. We have best 1086 with a $65,000 week total in week one, 74,000. So we added about 10,000 in week two and continuing to add about another 10 grand or about eight grand anyway. Um, for week three, but far and away, we have a clear winner in this competition. If best 1086 continues the way they're going, that's going to be our winner. Any thought of how you could possibly game this competition, David? So 1086, it looks like the first week wasn't a fluke. So, the, you know, so like a lot of times you'll see in a big week, like it might be they're pressing over leverage or something, but to repeat that in week two and to improve it a little bit so that this, this person has found a, a, a right, they're, they're probably hitting the right setups with, with uh, more size that like their ACE setups. I imagine the setups that are going well for them. They're putting more size into it, which is the right way to go. You know? So the only thing is, is that uh, on week three, well, actually three weeks. Wow. That's impressive. Every week has been improved. So, I would say, you know, a lot of times don't get too overconfident when you're on a streak like that because this person's clearly on a streak. So to be careful, no outlier loss, because imagine all those gains can, you know, just takes one one nasty one. So, but yeah, great job so I far. I mean, this looks like trading six. consistency. I mean, to me, it, it it looks like clear trading. And I think it's done the, the way the, the results are shown is that th this was the week one total. So 65,000, and then they added around 9,000 in gains for week two. So they're not really going bigger, but they're certainly trying to hold on to or ring fence their gains. Yeah. So if this was real money, they have preserved their gains through the entire competition. And like you said, it's not a fluke because they just keep adding to them. It's not like they've gone down in the rankings a single time since the beginning of the competition. They went big in the beginning. And they have been adding to it consistently. Now, on a positive note, best 1083 started out with 7,000 in gains the first week, pretty much added 10 grand in week two, and looks like they added about eight grand in week three. Um, and then, of course, that's uh, that's pretty impressive as well, but in a, in a very different, um, you know, very different way. They overtook. They moved up in the rankings and overtook best 1097 and best 1090. So, um, so they overtook the uh, the other two competitors. But still, this is anybody's race for uh, second and third position um, between best 1083, best 1097, and best 1090. Now, when you were in the competition, David. How did you play it? How did you um, manage to, to to get into the winner circle for the competition? Well, the way I, I planned it was just uh, it's, it was a twenty day competition. Is that correct? So five days times four. Was that, yeah, it's funny. Right? It's twenty trading days, uh, but thirty calendar days. So the way I approached it was just like a marathon. So just uh, 
you know, just be consistent with just a couple thousand a day. Because I remember when we spoke about it, you said usually the competition winners of the past were like, I, from what I remember, like 20 something thousand to 30,000. So I was like, okay, if I can make one or 2,000 a day for 20 days, uh, I think that's a good goal. And then at in the at, towards the end, you can you can find a strategy to see like uh, yeah, you want to be more aggressive or not, and see how far of a of a ahead of are you. Like for example, the first place is a is ahead of a lot of the second place, so maybe they don't want to be so aggressive finishing off. But at the same time, um, the other guys stuck uh, second through th second, third, and fourth. They you know it's it's going to be a, a race to the finish. It looks like so you got to be careful. Because if some if one one person presses the gas too much, they can you know it can have a outlier loss. So that's the thing you got to be careful with those outlier losses because that could set you back really quickly. So you know just just not using the leverage and just staying you know staying within striking reach. Yeah, yeah, without a doubt. I mean, I think that's really good advice. If you notice, you know, I said that you know when I told you way back when. It was about, you know, between 20 and 30,000 is the usual winning zone. Um, that is the majority grouping of our winners. They're, yeah. We just have an outlier. And if I remember correct, you um, you came in second place and in a similar yeah. set of circumstances where the number one person was just an outlier. They were like an anomaly. And uh, when we see that happening again, somebody is just a phenomenal trader who's you know met probably is a professional trader elsewhere or who knows we're going to find out next week um because it looks like we have we, we have a good idea who unless best 10 86 goes absolutely insane and blows up for some reason um they are pretty much um you know there or two three and four just have absolutely phenomenal banner weeks it looks like we're going to have best 1086 as our winner yeah. They have consistently stayed in the number one spot the entire competition. Now, anything else that yeah that you no notice is is that that and this is not every competition. We have green profitable traders three weeks in every single um, every single slot in the top ten is a green trader, um, which you know there's a, a that's basically indicating that over thirty percent of the people in the competition are green which is way better than the normal day trading success uh, rate statistics, which is also interesting. But it also has been a pretty consistently, you know, pretty bullish, clear market. Um, the, 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 the level of volatility has increased a little bit, but it's not um, an incredibly difficult or volatile market. Uh, would you agree with that as well, uh, with David? I agree. I agree. And actually, now that I think about it, week one was, uh, for, I think it was probably a, more volatile than week two or week three. So, yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's a good point. That's a good point. Yep. So let's jump in to see what people are trading. So uh, this week, the top uh, top traded stocks of the week was for uh, for Monday was GOEV. Uh, for, for Tuesday was WORK, uh, RX. Um, and then for Wednesday, it was TGL. Thursday was CLSK. And then Friday uh, today, which was NVFY. Have you traded any of these yourself this week? I tr I traded, yes, I traded one and two extensively. And number five, I did a deep analysis on it and I decided to not trade it. So I can, okay. yeah, t three and four, I did not trade them. So tell me about um, uh, about one and two. And then tell me why you yeah. didn't trade five. Yeah, absolutely. So GOEV um, was off a reverse split recently. They had a massive float, I think like 700, 800 million float, and they reduced it. They did a reverse split and reduced it to like 50 million. So it's still a huge float. We spoke about reverse splits the last time I came on. Yeah. And, but this one was still, this is a, a different kind of reverse split where the float is still massive, you know? So it's, it's such a, like a company that's just like it's they're constantly diluting. So this one, they put out well, some I used news. To call a few those days scam ago. stocks, right? So it's kind of yeah, a scam, yeah, scam, yeah, scam yeah. stock. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 yeah, exactly, exactly. So I was not, I, you know, just to be frank. You were trying to but, be uh, polite. I just put it right out yeah. there. This is a slightly <laughs> scammy stock. Yeah, I wouldn't. Yeah, you don't want to buy, buy this and hold it. But um, 
but it 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 put out some news, some like really like fluffy news, and it went up, and it's been going up for three or four days in a row. And I think a lot of times, a lot of the the uh, when they do reverse splits, the clearing firms have troubles with the locates, uh, because like they over it over lend out the shares for shorting, so it causes like a like a a, a combustion kind of you know an erratic behavior. So it's it's been going up for a few days, but they have dilution and they need cash. So that was my so I traded it a few times, but actually, since it was uh the borrow fee rate started to increase because my my thesis about um what do you call it uh the locates being lent out messed up because of the reverse split I decided not to go aggressive but it was it was a good short works was just a small float stock it's been going up for no news uh, uh for multi days in a row has been uh, some shorting opportunity here and there but uh it's it's one of these one million float stocks you want to be careful with it um. And yeah, and then the last one, NVCY, was that the one? Was it NVFY? Uh, you said you NVFY. did NVFY. Some... <laughs> yeah, that one's a sketchy stock. Another one, 1 million float stock is being ma manipulated, has no news or anything. It's a furniture company, like hmm. a really small furniture company. They do like not even good furniture, just reg like, you know, just like imitation so furniture. So they're, 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 they're a... Uh, a, a... I don't want to say this a crappy furniture company. I'm just kidding. I'm just a low, a yeah, low budget a, furniture company. Yeah, uh, like a, like a really like an IKEA, like like five notches down of IKEA, and uh, it's a <laughs> one million float stock. So it's just like going haywire on on a you know just manipulate. It seems like manipulation. So yeah. that's what happened today, and uh, it, it faded today. But I decided to lay off it. Got it. Okay, perfect. So let's take a look at some of these charts. All right, so we're we're looking at this is the S and P. Um, this is the S and P 100. Obviously, the market just keeps going up, up and away. It's in a very strong uptrend. We got the QQQ also in a very strong uptrend. I mean, the one that everybody was talking about today in the big name stocks was Apple, with a big lawsuit, uh, federal government antitrust case against Apple. But still, Apple holding here at the 172 level. Let's jump in and let's take a look at the uh, the not quite so good IKEA NVFY. Oh yeah, look at that. I mean, this is the typical big, huge gap up, and a uh, little got a little bit of activity today. But then also, it did it on December 28th. It did the same kind of deal. No news or anything. So that was like it's it has a history of doing this. That's not a reverse split. That's a, a gap up for no reason. That's just that is called stock manipulation potentially. I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. It just seems weird. But I'll tell you, that's very sketchy. Um, this is very sketchy stock behavior. I'm sure there's some reason for it. But um, you know, it, it's uh it and again, it had a very strong move in the morning. And then it pretty much faded and died the rest of the day. Um, not really, uh, not really my style of trading. Um, but G O E V, um, G O E V. I mean, you can see why a lot of people traded it this week. Um, you know, it had a big gap up on uh, on Friday, continued to go up on Monday and Tuesday, and then obviously, well, what actually that was a big gap up on Monday. And then Tuesday, Wednesday continued to go higher. Thursday, it made another big move. I mean, really not a bad looking chart, to be honest. Um, you know, here's a stock that is bucking the downtrend and breaking the descending channel. So, um, you know, uh, that one you said, uh, that was the reverse. Was that the reverse split one? Yeah, it, it's um like about two weeks ago, they did a reverse split from what I believe. Let me double check. It's something that people overlook. Yeah, so the reverse split was on Mar March 8th. So there you go. So you got so some there, charts right. don't pick it up. Yeah, it was it was quiet after the split. And uh, and then then it, here then it, it is. March news. 8th is right here. March 8th is right here. Um, you now that's where the reverse split and it took a couple of days for everybody to kind of register. And then sure enough, it starts squeezing to the upside. Yeah, Very so they went from a 800 million float down to like a 50 million float. Wow, I mean that 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 supply and demand um, 
you know, shift will make a major difference in the way the stock works and the way it trades. Um, so here is WORX, right? I mean, this is just a, a typical, you know, uh, pop and not drop. So it popped and then it didn't drop, which is good. Um, you know, it kind of held its gains in a kind of big bull pennant formation. Uh, this was another one that you said that you traded. I guess that was on Tuesday. Yeah, multiple days it ran with no news. Uh, yeah. It just kept kept popping and holding, and then like it, it faded a little bit. Then what happens is when it when it fades a little bit, short sellers get sucked into it. They they short it, expecting it to go further down, and they they get squeezed. So it's just yeah. rinse, repeat, rinse, repeat. You know. Yeah. Well, that makes sense because this one seems to actually might it might actually be trading on. Just the fact that the company is doing something good that's based in reality, not some, you know, uh, reverse split or you yeah, know, some possibly, kind of yeah. a manipulation of some kind. This one might actually have some real, real meat behind it, which is possible. Um, you know, then we got TGL, right, which gapped up to an amazing uh, almost eight dollars, uh, eight forty, and then that one is just a total uh uh you know popper and dropper since it just dropped straight back to the area which it came from but it was one of our top traded stocks on Wednesday with uh, 126,500 shares traded on Wednesday um yeah, that's i'm i'm assuming all short most likely i would Someone guess really you know money. i mean that's it looks like that was a, a big one to go short, and that may may have been what put some of our contenders back in the winner circle, reaching or or um, you know a striking distance. The next one we have is CLSK. CLSK. I mean, the chart doesn't look too bad on the daily. Um, you know, it's kind of been forming this kind of bull pennant or bull flag formation with with these kind of gaps up to twenty one dollars. But I mean, this one looks like it might also be getting ready for a real breakout as well. This is a uh, a fairly well known company. It's in the in the a higher price range than most of the other stocks that have been traded in the competition. It's trading between fifteen and you know twenty one dollars, twenty three on the high end. Um, so any any thoughts on this company as well? Uh, I did not trade this one. I I, I saw it. Um, but yeah, it looks like a. It's got a strange people stock buying it. Pattern. Yes. It's uh, it's it's uh, it's too choppy for me personally, but yeah, probably some opportunity here and there with it. It's not I my, mean, my style. definitely something to watch, but to me that that choppy pattern between fifteen to twenty one, that's a five dollar swing up and down. Um, so let's go to some of the other ones. We got Pixie, which was on Monday. It was the the number two spot on Monday. Again, similar popper and dropper. We got AMP APM. Uh, that oh, actually has one. a decent, yeah. that is a decent looking chart. APM. I mean, this one has been going, uh, it gapped up from a dollar 50 double to $3 and it's been kind of trending higher ever since. Yeah, this um, one's been squeezing, uh, I, I didn't trade it, but it was, it was, uh, been squeezing some short sellers from what I heard, like on social media and stuff. Uh, got it. it's, it's, it's float is really small. So. Yeah. Another low floater um, that that just kind of, you know, pops into the scene, so to speak. Uh, the next one is W, is so W O R X, which was top traded on Tuesday, was second place. W, let's take a look at that one again. W O R X. Um, that, like I said, has a pretty decent chart. It looks like a kind of consolidation there around the 320, uh, 350 area. If it holds 310. Um, w O R X could potentially even be setting up for another measured move higher. A um, little skeptical because obviously it's it's done this before, um, you know, and it is kind of another one of these low floater, you know, quote unquote scam stocks. They 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 tend to be manipulated somewhat, or at least it seems. Um, and then the last one is K A V L. K A V L. That was Apple. Yep, K A V L. Um, this one broke the, I mean, huge volume spike compared to what it usually trades. Um, just massive spike in volume from, you know, big downtrend. 
descending channel break. Uh, so it broke the, the the descending channel line down, broke the downtrend line, and uh, and now it's kind of come back to life. But I mean, again, all of these stocks have similar patterns. This is like um, trading stocks that have had no pulse, and now they just got shocked with the uh, yeah. with the, e the the electrocardiogram. Boom! Shh, they just like got 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 a, a a jolt of life given back into them. Especially KAVL, it was on year lows, I think. So it yeah, definitely, it I mean, got it's just that total shot. downtrend. Yep, 50, 52 week lows. Um, the defibrillator, cold. they got hit by the defibrillator <laughs> and got yeah. shocked back to life. And our traders, our number one best traders, love those, it seems. Um, so uh, AMTX. Oh, uh, yeah, I think this one was up today, no? Oh, yeah, yeah, big, yeah, yeah, this was the second and most it, actively yeah, traded stock okay. today. I traded this one early in, in the morning. The morning, uh, then I stopped trading it uh, around the first hour of the day. But yeah, it looked like that was a good decision because it kept grinding up. And then they, uh, they, they had a lot of dilution on hand, but they, you know, they they uh, were waiting to, to to use it. And it looks like they, they, used they it apparently the used it at the end of the day because it <laughs> fell from seven dollars yeah. to five seventy. Yeah. So that's the thing. Like, so everyone's everyone's anticipating it. So like, and yep. it's like a cat and mouse game. It's like a yeah, you know, you're playing with fire with these stocks, so you just don't want to get caught in them. But uh, but it looks like our number one best trader competitors didn't do so bad. Um, just to, to let's take a look at some of the big names like Nvidia. You know, Nvidia is holding up. You know, a lot of people said that NVIDIA would be pulling back, but it seems to be holding up here. Hasn't broken a thousand yet, but it also hasn't fallen down. So NVIDIA, you know, hanging up here with uh, the AI craze continuing. Microsoft, you know, you would think Microsoft and maybe um, Google would be up on sympathy, and they were um, with Apple getting uh, antitrust suit. So they have uh, similar to the, um, you know, the Apple um, App Store. They have the Google Play Store on Google. And then, of course, Microsoft has its Microsoft Store as well. So uh, certainly you see them. I mean, I, the question is whether or not there will be further antitrust litigation um, filed. But uh, maybe this was just a, you know, election time news, uh, uh, news, news stunt. But uh, but we shall see as that continues. But uh, any other stocks you wanted me to take a look at before we go? Um, no, just uh, Nvidia is pretty impressive. I remember the last time we spoke, it had that big red day. Yeah, it's it, it's, uh, it's it's held. <laughs> it's 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 found its legs and it hasn't broken down, but it also hasn't broken the one thousand yet. But it, you know, at this point, it's hard for a stock. So the float is significantly bought up on NVIDIA, right? So that's why it's up at $940. The float's been bought up quite a bit. But um, but again, you know, it takes less buying and holding to drive it past 1000 The question is is, is, is if if there are catalysts for people to sell, and so far there doesn't seem to be one, the buying continues to come in, and, um, and NVIDIA is holding up there. Now, interestingly, GLD, gold has broken out. Um, to all-time highs. We had the Fed announcement on Wednesday, um, you know, and this is GLD, the gold ETF. Fed announcement on Wednesday, and, um, you know, the Fed came out, and basically they're continuing to be dovish. So, you know, that that helps add to the price of gold. GBTC, you know, uh, Bitcoin has had a big pullback from, from 70,000 to just about 60,000, or in this case, uh, 56 on the GBTC, which is which would be below 60,000, but a big 40. Uh, well, I think it would be like a, a very big pullback on um, on Bitcoin uh, in the last week or so. Um, but again, that tends to trade a little bit with technology as well. Are you trading any cryptos, uh, friendly bear? Uh, no, I'm not. No, I'm not trading any. It's, it's it's too much for me. I got enough with the stocks as it is. Gotcha. I always <laughs> like the fact that the stock market closes on the weekend and I can take a break. Yeah. Oh my God. The crypto is twenty four seven. I crazy. know, man. It never stops. The fun never stops with crypto. But uh, but certainly, let's jump back in and wrap things up. I'm gonna just share my screen one more time.
All right, so we went through the stocks. Um, just any final words, David, as a, a, a winner in the past, what would your final words be to competitors going into the last week? Okay, so uh, five more days. So it's just uh, for those that, you know, are – well, the, the guy in first place or the person in first place, they got to maintain their lead. You got a really nice cushion there. So it's all about just not messing up, not over-trading. Not, you know, getting greedy and it's paper money. You got to remember, this is paper money. It's, it's a, you know, you don't need to get greedy. It's like the greed, got to contain that greed. And the, so, but the the second, third, fourth, and uh, the, the guys stuck on, a, uh, the people stuck at 20,000 or so, um, just, you know, execute the same, the, the trades that have been working for you. Just keep doing that. And uh, don't, don't try to push it too hard. You know, don't let it, let it play out. Like they're all doing well. So like mm -hmm. it's just a, a, someone is going to unfortunately someone is going to you know like over leverage or something and mess up and they take themselves out. So it's like you don't want that to be you. So you just got to the, the trades that have been working well just stick to those and keep just keep going the way you're going and just plan for that last that couple last couple of days um see where you're at and see how you want to want to be a little bit more aggressive or not so you can you know you got to overtake the, the the lead or whatever, but yeah, they're they're all. It seems to be going well, and it, and it, it, the people that are red, uh, you know, and way way behind, you could you know use Dos Trader to learn. You know what I mean? Learn and and get the experience in. And uh, Dos Trader is a great tool. You know, I use it every day. It's been this is the way I learned. I learned from uh, use the competition. So it's so awesome, win -win for everybody. Yeah, absolutely, bro. So just a big review for all of our competitors. We're here in the last week of competition. What have you been using and doing to make the, yourself successful so far? Try to expound upon that. Eliminate any mistakes. If you did some um, you know, crazy mistakes in the beginning, just try to avoid them. It's anybody's competition still, right? If somebody else messes up, that can put you higher in the rankings. Focus on what you've learned so far. If there's a time to take a, a little bit more risk with your paper money, now is the time to do it. It's still anybody's competition. Try to go for it this week. Um, remember, there's no overnight hold, but for the most part, everybody has been pretty well behaved this competition, which is great. And um, remember to stay up to date with all things DAS uh, by signing up to our newsletter, www.dastrader.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Dash Trader TV. Das Newsroom will also sign up and uh, follow the friendly bear, our friend David here, and uh, follow us on social media. Except any parting words, David, before you go and uh, enjoy your weekend? Yeah, no, just uh, thanks for having me on. And yeah, good luck to everybody out there in the competition. Great, David. Thank you so much for joining us yet again. You've been a real aid in analyzing these results and, and helping us promote the number one best trader competition. Thanks again. Trade well, everybody. Good luck in the last week of the competition. Bye, everyone. Bye, guys.